time limits on the room, so we want to make sure that we have enough time for you all to get up and speak. So um, we will be adhering as we have been to the three minute rule. We appreciate the fact that you are all here and we do want to hear you. So I will start with the executive secretary calling the folks back up. Diane Smith.
Did you speak the same as the letter that you submitted to us? Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Robbie Howell. Good evening, board members. I'm Robbie Howell, and I live at one five two. 40 20th Avenue Southwest in Berrien. <laughs> anyway, uh, I have been a real estate professional for over 30 years. I wrote to you in advance of this meeting and submitted a letter to you discussing that the city of Berrien is failing to submit a realistic assessment of the potential property tax revenues available in two period and area Y to support the annexation of area Y and that the period application for annexation does not meet standards number one and two of RCW 36.93.170. Please direct these questions to the City of Burien to provide clarification on its annexation application. Uh, could the board request that the City of Burien show a plan for how they intend to work with the business, real estate, and community development agencies to support the declining real estate values in the area Y? Could the board request the city of Maine to show a final report on how these declining real estate values change the paradigm that has been advanced in the birth draft reports that this annexation would be revenue neutral. Could the board request the city of Maine to give an explanation or show documentation for why it is rushing to do this current in this current market situation. Is Seattle, which has much higher property values, millions more properties, and huge industrial base, cannot gather enough revenues to support area-wide? How will Beering? Could the city of Beering show a plan for how it intends to improve area-wide? enough in 10 years so that, that it can support itself for the services it needs. Currently, it appears that if you're in annexes area-wide, one half of Burien will be barely able to support itself for the service it needs. And the other half, area X and area-wide, will not be able to Based on this economic dilemma, could we see Burien's plan to increase real estate valuations in the area and attract new buyers? Thank you for your time and deliberation. Any questions for Ms. Howell? Uh, Ms. Howell, have you had an opportunity to read the Burke report? Uh, part of it. Okay, did you have uh, privy to that portion that uh, states quite blatantly that they expect full recovery in 2016 when activity is anticipated to return to a more hysterical pattern. As a real estate salesperson, do you see any evidence in your market that that is even starting to occur? Um, let me see that. There's two ways to answer this. Temporarily, we are seeing an increase in business due to all the foreclosures that we have. And, um, but the employment uh, rate is still down considerably. And the world situation, the economic 
scientists in the world um, presently are not conducive to uh, increases for some time to come. I don't think. But so when you when you have occasion to relate to the uh, new jobs, that would indicate to me that you're not privy to any knowledge about new industry or businesses coming into the area that would generate new jobs? Um, no, I do know, though, that the uh, Boeing Company does have a couple new contracts, and I'm very excited about that. But the employment does need to increase uh, for everyone. Not everyone can work at the Boeing Company. So, thank you. Any other questions? Ms. Hal, could you...
We see an improved future of our community in the degree of annexation. Um, sitting uh, on the border of Burien, an annexation to Burien would give Burien control over our community, over the growth, over what type of growth um, would be seen in our community. Uh, being unincorporated as we've been for so long, we have had a large concentration of low income housing <coughs> placed in our community, uh, more than our fair share. We um, don't see that as uh, conducive to a healthy community. Um, with an Iberian annexation, we see that, as, we, as I said, there would be control over the type of growth in our community. Um, which would be a benefit to Burien in the long run. You know, we have to look at, people are talking about 10 years down the line, um, we have to look even further down the line of how this community will grow um, if it's not near next to Burien. We know staying unincorporated is not an option for us with Team County uh, continually pulling out services in our community. It's a detriment to the community there's been a lot of talk tonight about how our housing values have declined. What people aren't addressing is the fact that perhaps a lot of that has to do with the fact that we are unincorporated. We don't have a local government. And that's what our community needs. Uh, this will put control over uh, many aspects of our community. Sitting on the border of Burien, it will only be an advantage to Burien. You know, we have to really look to the future um, in this annexation. We can't look to tomorrow. We can't look to five years. We really have to go beyond that. Um, I really hope this board will consider facts. Uh, I've heard a lot tonight. I've read the Burke Report. I've read the Seattle Budget Analysis. Um, there's been talk about how Burien and the Burke Report, there's no mention of the social services. Uh, provide help Burien would provide for social services. The fact is that the social services will be maintained as they are now by King County. They will not be provided by Burien. There will be no change. So this will not come out of Burien's budget. I've also heard the talk about the structural deficit. And you know, this is looking into the future of what a community needs as you go down the line. Uh, this is not something that um, we have a $75 million structural deficit that needs to be um, taken care of tomorrow. This is how cities plan for the future. So I do hope this board considers all the facts, and um, that is my hope. And as I said, we, we are supportive of the Green annexation. We see a better future for our community with the Green annexation. So thank you. Questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. John Poitras. Um, 
in the, I've made a copy for everyone there, of my statements and attachments to back up what I'm saying. Uh, basically, I'm, I, there's a number of issues I have, but I'm speaking to the escalating crime and police costs herein for the board to review. These are not discussed in the 2011 foot draft, which is included with the city's application. Uh, one, uh, I guess I already said that, said that in my statement, but we'd like to see a final work report uh, and a real fiscal analysis based on current valuation information and revenues and legal and police service needs. Number two, um, we'd like to see a final report on actual crime in area Y versus Burien per thousand population for at least the year 2010. Number three, the cost per $1,000 of assessed real estate property value increased in Burien to cover the police contract while property values of the city will decline uh, in 2012. How does the city budget plan cover these, which it apparently doesn't have, cover these escalating costs and still provide for the service to both areas, benefit the quality of life and public safety to all citizens in both areas? Number four, what has King County committed to in resources to cover the cost of escalating crime in area Y, as we have seen in 2011? Number five, could we see the specified business plans for both areas Y and X as discussed in the comprehensive plan? Number six, what is the specified plan for the future economic development in these areas? Uh, my time's up, but I reference the what standards apply to each one of these questions. And so I believe they're the general questions that need to be answered by the city of Green. Thank you. Have you asked the city of Erie any of these questions? Yes, I have. And you have received those from the call? Uh, well, I, I'll give you an example. I called and I spoke to the uh, budget director and I asked to see the, what the budget plan was for the proposed uh, annexation of Y. And I was told, uh, well, it didn't have one, it's the Burke Report. But I said, so you're saying the Burke Report is Asked, so you said the Burke report is your budget plan? She says, no, I didn't say that. And I said, well, then what is your budget plan? Well, that's the Burke report. Can I help you?
And as far as safety is concerned, uh, we live very near downtown Lake Center. Uh, several of our neighbors, myself included, feel very safe walking anywhere, anytime, day or night. Uh, and following crime reports for many, many years, and the North Highline area is no more dangerous for crime wind than Burien, uh, Federal Way, Bellevue, wherever you want to go. Uh, so I ask you to move forward and approve this annexation. Thank you. Southwest in beautiful center of the known world, Bury. Um, I come today just to speak about the annexation, but mostly to, to talk to the board and get an understanding from the board <clears throat> about this process. I went through and copied uh, the board from the website. Uh, the board has a, here we go, uh, King County Fund Review Board Notice of Detention Format Annexations slash mergers, consolidations, extensions. At the bottom of the notes, it states, the board cannot accept insufficient proposals, e.g., proposals submitted with incomplete information or an adequate map. Incomplete proposals must be returned to the submitting entity. Okay. Uh, the financial analysis, i.e., the BERT report, provided by the city does not meet the requirements of the, of the bond review board. It states on there, like I just read, if it's incomplete, it can't be accepted. The entire uh, BERT report is submitted and it still shows on the city's website as a discussion draft, not a final. Therefore, it is not complete. Imagine, if you will, as with all professional services contracts, that draft does not equate with done or complete. We have an architectural firm or an engineering firm who really prize their stamps, they're very valuable items, to put on something that says draft. They mean draft. But what we have here with this report is a discussion draft. And now we heard earlier today that it is a final. Curious question. Okay, second item. The BERT report stipulates, and I quote, the annexation sales tax credit allows the city to recoup any financial losses due to annexation up to the maximum of 0.85% of the total city sales tax revenue, end quote. Not true. In contradiction to state law, and I quote, RCW 82-14-450. The tax authority under this section is a credit against the state tax under chapter 82.08, not against the city sales tax. There are numerous errors technical legislative errors in the BERT report, which by itself should have it thrown out. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Rankin? Thank you. 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 Thank
Excel as an application. <coughs> Lee Raby. Hi, my name is Lee Brady, and my uh, address is uh, 11926 Embaum Boulevard, space 20. And I'd like to uh, take and just leave a written review of why I'm against the initiative. Who would I leave this with? Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Mr. Holmes? Uh, sir, yes. can you tell me is your home in Marion or no, in? No, it's uh, my address. Can you go back so we get you recorded? <laughs>
you very much, sir. You're welcome. We will spend any amount of money to kill this initiative. Loretta, they've already spent 14000 to make up for what they've done. Loretta Butterworn? Pardon? I'm calling an expert. Thank you. My name is Lucy Krakowiak. 
I'm a Fury resident, 15405 6th Avenue Southwest in Fury, and I'm speaking as a resident. I want to thank you for your time as a board member. I'm a, uh, just for the record, I am a Fury and City Council person, and I'm a King County Library Board member. So, um, hearing testimony, uh, thank you for your attention. I have sent a letter in uh, previously. And it talks about my concerns about the financial sustainability of this proposal. I want to make sure that before we go any further, that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Uh, so the, the financial report, I believe, is optimistic with its numbers. I think those need to be reevaluated with real numbers that are happening today. Um, the fire districts, there's actually two of them involved, fire district number two. Uh, has submitted some documents to the city of Erie that show their concerns regarding the finances. Um, tonight, I'm submitting a question that is another I to dot or a T to cross, and this is regarding the North Highline Fire District. That question is, where are the pre-annexation agreements that adequately address fire protection and emergency medical services in the 195 acres that are left unincorporated, the Marine Delta, and the Sliver by the River. And I know it was mentioned and touched on by the King County representative and um, the uh, North Highland Fire District representative. But I think before we go any further, this can't be a promise or an intention that we're going to uh, look at this in the future. I think this needs to be addressed before we go further. The annexation as currently planned will create an impractical boundary district. It's a very small district of 195 acres with no assets, no employees, and an estimated annual revenue of only approximately $173,000. Bring this to your attention as an important question, needing attention before proceeding further. Thank you. Mount, Mount View, 
after school, that library is packed. We voted in 2004, we passed a bond levy to rebuild the White Center Library where it is and for improvements to the Boulevard Park Library. Those libraries are being held hostage by the King County Library System. And what's going to happen, basically, is they have told us they're going to wait to hear what you decide about whether or not they close those libraries. That's the fact about the library. You're talking about communities where children need all the education they can get, where people don't have computers at home, they don't have internet at home. This is about representation, it's about education. Please support the answer. Any questions? Thank you. I have questions. Uh, Pam, uh, both uh, isn't uh, Burien in the King County Library System, right? So how would the, the incorporation of impact the libraries? I, 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 it seems to me that they're still in the, in the system. Yes, they are. Absolutely. But the, the, what Mr. Potassic, Mr. Potassic is the executive director of the King County Library System. What he said to me was that it is not the job of King County Library System to provide library services to Seattle residents. In other words, what we are looking at in North Highline is that ultimately we're going to become part of the city. Either Burien, which is what we're hoping for, or Seattle kind of waiting in the wings, who knows when that might happen. But the library system does not want to provide library services to Seattle. And he's saying because in, in the case of the White Center Library, I think it's only two doors north of the boundary with North Highline. So if North Highline winds up being annexed by Seattle, Seattle would be right there. But right now, the proposal is here. Yes, and so we're, we're hoping that you're going to support it and the library system will then say, okay, we're going to give you the library you've been paying for. I have a question, please. Would this statement that you've just made be true if this area was annexed into Seattle? Would it still be the same because it's the county library system? It doesn't make any difference which side of the road you jump over. It's still going to be applicable, your statement. The statement that the library system wants to close the library, the libraries? Yes. If we become part of Seattle, and it might not even take that much. It might just take you saying, no, we're not going to support this annexation. Because they've only put the decision off until they know what you're going to do. And my understanding is that the sales tax rebate also plays into that. So if the annexation to Burien would happen, it's my understanding our library will be rebuilt where it is, which is what we voted for and what we've been paying for. If, we're, if this annexation does not go forward, I would expect that the King County Library System would close those libraries and build a consolidated library further south, more into Burien. So a Seattle annexation would leave us with one library, the small Green Ridge Library, that is, I think, 2,500 square feet for the entire community. Thank you. Bob Edgar. Bob Edgar, uh, 12674 Shirley Drive, Southwest in the city of Union. that they have, in drafts that they have uh, presented over the years that have consistently stated 
that the annexation of Area X and Y will always, in the long term, leave the city of Miriam millions of dollars in debt. Additionally, Fire District Number 2 of Miriam entered a letter into the public record at a Miriam City Council meeting stating that there were money problems that would be created for this agency if Area Y was annexed to Miriam. For that reason, they cannot support the annexation of Area Y. A copy of this letter has been previously included in your packet. I'm requesting that the board ask the City of Miriam uh, these questions. Has a new interlocal agreement been signed between the city and the two fire districts, Fire District 2 and North Highland, since 2008, that specifically addresses the financial issues they will face with the annexation of Area Y? Second question, could the city provide a copy of the agreement and the plan to cover the costs of the aid unit, the bonds, the retirements for North Highland Fire District? And which group of citizens will be expected to bear the burden of these costs, estimated to be around $3.5 million. And the last question is, what will be the economic plan for raising or generating the new monies for these fire districts that will provide equal or greater quality of service to area-wide should it be asked? Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Ace? Uh, I have a question. It seems like tonight we've heard from quite a few citizens of the city of Burien that they're not very happy with this proposed annexation. And it seems to me that they've done, with Judge Gina on what you've written to us before, that they've done what voters should do, and that's that they've elected someone in the city council who may question this decision. Um, was there anyone else elected to the board? And what do you think the city council, the, I, what do you think the, um, direction of the city council was going to be in 2012 based on the makeup from the recent elections? Uh, I think as a public, private citizen talking, I'm not going to speculate on the direction that the, the council will take on this at this point in time. Any other questions? Thank you. Joey Martinez. Joey Martinez, 429 South 189th Street, Burien, 9848. I am a current resident of Burien. Um, first of all, I ran, uh, first, I should, should be known that I'm a City of Seattle employee. Uh, secondly, uh, I ran for Burien City Council, lost to Mr. Edgar in the primary. But the, I walk and talk the hundreds, if not thousands, of doors. And for the most part, I'd say 70% of the Marian population didn't know about it. They, they weren't plugged in. They didn't know anything, didn't care. They were worried about sidewalks, uh, crime, things like that. Um, as part of my homework for running, at first, I took in a lot of the perception, and I, was, I started off against annexation. Uh, looking into it, however, I spent hundreds of hours just researching, trying to get to the bottom of what the best position would be in the long term, and I ultimately decided that the best thing to be would be for annexation of the North Highland area. Uh, giving control to a variant for zoning, um, things like that. There's so many reasons it's um, pretty incredible not to annex. Um, property value is going down, but it's going down everywhere, unfortunately. Um, things outside of our control, crime. Um, I'll let the King County Sheriff's Office handle that, but I, I've gotten the feeling that crime isn't as bad in the area as it uh, seems. It's mostly perception. So that's something to keep, uh, keep in mind. Uh, one of the um, exhibits given to you was from a, a Highline, Highline Times article written by Catherine Carboni, Rogers, I believe. That was in response to one of the, uh, one of the articles I wrote uh, in support of a variant annexation of North Highline. Uh, part of the reason I the, part of the reason she responded to that was because I put in there that uh, with the Seattle with Seattle we're gonna lose, the Highland School District is going to lose money and all the Highland School District taxpayers are going to pay. That uh, in particular, what was left out and what was explained to you was that 
but the city of Seattle has much higher densities than um, the city of Burien. So one thing that I worry about is the city of Seattle, which I'm, I'm an employee, so I'm kind of worried about saying this, but oh well. Um, the city of Seattle annexes that area eventually. Uh, they will build have a lot of low-income housing in that area, and that will affect me as a Highlands School District taxpayer. That will affect people in Des Moines, SeaTac, Miami Park as well. That is why I wrote that letter, and um, it didn't come out in in her article, but that's that's the reason I fear uh, having to pay more taxes if Seattle annexes that area. Another issue, since my time is almost running out, um, just adding on to that. Um, I really hope you, you agree with this. Um, most of the, the comments against annexation were um, hopefully, they don't really fit the quasi-judicial reasons for this meeting, so I hope you support that annexation uh, application. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Thank you. John Jovanovich. <coughs> My name is John Spanovich and I live at 11227 18th Place Southwest. And uh, we got annexed into the Burien City the last time around. And frankly speaking, I think they've already been up more than they can chew. And I agree with the uh, uh, councilman or councilwoman uh, Krakowiak. I don't like the way that, that uh, Burien is headed either. And Burien, I served uh, I served eight years as a sewer commissioner here, and I saw how Burien operated not just once, but several times it cost the citizens a hell of a lot of money. I want to give you one example. <clears throat> there was a flood area over off of First Avenue, southwest, probably about six blocks over, and the the rainwater was coming down so fast it was flooding some of the houses. And so Marion got all excited and they said, uh, we want you to build a, a pumping station and pump that stormwater into the sewer. Number one, it's illegal to pump stormwater into a sewer. But they, they insisted, they insisted, and, and uh, they got a contractor. And I told him, it was a three-member board, Sewer Commission at that time, three-member board. I was the odd man out. I was opposed to that, and I brought uh, uh, documents showing that that was not possible to put that, sur uh, that stormwater into the 10-inch line. And they, they insisted, so they built the thing, and as soon as it turned on, uh, they had to turn it off within a half hour. Otherwise, there'd be a sewage coming up in the people's toilets into their house. Over $300,000 wasted there. And the sewer district, uh, the sewer district had to put a new outfall into Puget Sound from the uh, plant down there. <clears throat> Gary and no knew what was going to happen, and they they had they were supporting the engineer. Uh, they figured they could build it for just a little bit over two million dollars. Well, fortunately, there was an election, and uh, the guy that got elected, he voted with me, and we got a different outfit to build it. They built it for over one million dollars less. And so that's how Burien operates. So I don't think the people should trust Burien. I don't trust it, certainly. And I think, like I said, I think they get off a lot more than they can shoot. And I served in the legislature over 30 years ago, and so I got a pretty good idea on how it works down there. And if Burien thinks they're going to get that money, I think they better think again. I don't think, especially in this economy. I can answer any questions you want. Questions for Mr. Jovanovich? Jovanovich. Thank you. Thank you. Signed up to speak is Jerry Robeson. If there is anyone who would like to speak after that, please come to me so that you can sign up on the sign-in sheet. Hello, uh, 
Terry Robinson, 1228 Southwest 119th, Gary in Washington. I've lived in the same spot for over 30 years. I owned a real estate business in White Center for about a dozen years before I started practicing law. I've been practicing law for the last 16 years with primary focus on real estate and land development. And I've been studying, I was a former president of the White Center Chamber of Commerce. I was vice president several times. I was involved in the committee that set up the police storefront, first one in the county. It became a model for all of the storefronts in the county. Uh, and I've been studying annexation and incorporation ever since the Growth Management Act was passed and created a mandate that says that urban areas should be governed by cities, not counties. I am a strong, and I'm currently on the Burien City Council. I'm not here speaking as a city council in the night, but I came around the idea that Burien was the best place for North Timeline many years ago after studying the costs and looking at the impact of the representation. I believe it's the right thing for Burien because it gives Burien control of an area that has a long historical tie to Burien. It's part of the school district, it's part of the economic district, and development in North Highline and the pattern of development in North Highline has a uh, extreme impact on Burien. I think it's the right thing for the people in North Highline because Burien is a much closer government, a much smaller government. People would be much closer to their government, much more able to influence what happens to their area as opposed to being in King County where North Highline get some attention because of the whole low-income housing thing, or, here, or Seattle where North Highline would represent less than 5%, I think about 3% of the population of the city, so you can get an idea of how much say they would have in Seattle. I heard a lot of stuff about people opposed to it. One of the things that really disappoints me about the residents of Burien is the number of people who show up and trot out arguments about crime and poverty and these people in North Highline need help we can't give them and, and what it really all strikes me is we don't want those people in our city which is not the message I think should be given I believe that's historically part of Burien and I believe that this annexation should be allowed to go forward and it should be left up to the people in North Highline to vote in an election as to whether or not they want to hand it to the hearing. Thank you. Okay, two additional people have signed up, Lois Shipper and Mark Upkes. If you have not been sworn in, would you please let me know? Do <laughs> <laughs> you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? Yes, I Thank you. Hi, my name is Lois Shepard, and thank you for the opportunity to comment tonight. Um, I'm kind of baffled why Mary wants to take on White Center. I think it's a high need. Um, dense area that has um, many social and health needs. I work in the health and social field here in White Center, serving the community of White Center. Um, I don't know that Seattle is the answer, but I can certainly say that Seattle has many more services and a much broader array of services for a population that has high needs, which is my experience with the population in White Center who come to seek services. Um, I just would like to have the opportunity to have that option as opposed to putting a vote to hear right now. I'd like there to be the option of one or the other and I'd like folks to be informed. I look around the um, crowd tonight and I see an awful lot of people that look like me and that's not what I see when I walk down the streets in my neighborhood. And so I would just like to have, um, make sure that there's due diligence in community outreach 
and in reaching the community that really resides, the, the entire community that resides in the North Carolina area that's up for annexation, my real fear is that it will go to a vote and there will be a vast majority of the population that are uninformed about what, they, um, what they're voting on and what's going to happen. And the turnout will overrepresent the crowd in this room, including myself, because I have a, um, I'm informed and I have an interest. But I think that, that there needs to be more work done than there has been at reaching the true diverse population that lives in White Center, works in White Center, eats in White Center, shops in White Center, because it doesn't look like the crowd that's behind me. So that's just my offering. Thanks. Any questions? Good question. Do you live in like some I do. Or, uh, area? Why? I live in the area, in, I guess, the area that remains um, unincorporated right now. I do. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, my name is Mark Uppis. I'm uh, a member of the I'm sorry, I already did this. I'll put it back. Yeah, sure. I'm also a <laughs> scout on my honor. I'm doing my best. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, um, I'd like to claim the 10 minutes. I'm, uh, I'm on the board of the White Center Homeowners Association. We are 40 families that have uh, been more supportive of either not being annexed yeah. or more supportive of Seattle annexation as opposed to Burien annexation. I'm also, I spent four years on the Unincorporated Area Council. I was the founding member of the uh, Hicks Lakewood Park, uh, Friends of Hicks Lake, Lakewood Park, which was one of our major parks in White Center. And I currently have been the president of the White Center Chamber of Commerce for two years and have been act very active in that organization. Um, the White Center has, you know, we go over the stats, some of you might not know this, that, you know, 45% of the area wide is uh, minority communities of color. We have over 50 languages that are spoken in downtown White Center, over 50. Five over. Um, we have in, uh, in the school district, 67% of the kids are uh, uh, free or reduced lunch. So just imagine, and then imagine the socioeconomic components of that complex, beautiful population and, and community. That's why we live here. My wife and I spent many years overseas and in other cultures, and that's why we live here. And we adore this and, and so respect this diversity, but the reality is there are challenges associated with serving this population. Now let's talk about crime. I'm a little bit concerned that the Burien Police Chief could not give you the crime statistics and clearly present those to you to understand. We've lived in White Center for 12 years and we've had one murder a year, at least one murder a year. We had two murders last year, and half of those have been January. <coughs> That if you calculate, if you go on City God and other websites and look at murder rates, Seattle has a murder rate that's 3.24 per 100,000 residents. Burien has a murder rate, if they had 100,000 people, of over 6. And White Center last year would have a murder rate of over 10 if we had 100,000 people based on the murders we had last year. And then for those folks, I'm sorry, for those folks who come here and suggest that our, our, our police services are fine. We don't need any more police services. That's just doesn't, that's not acceptable. It is not acceptable. One of the things the Board of the Chamber's been talking about is we need police service. We, we love getting our storefront officer back, but we think we need a two-person team walking in downtown White Center from 6 p.m. until 4 a.m. every day of the week. And if we do that for two years, we're going to have a significant reduction in crime. But right now, we're not seeing that reduction in crime, particularly major crimes. That's interesting. Seattle proposed doubling the police department, the police force in White Center, doubling. You know what? We're going to talk about that because they can't afford it. They proposed a four-person gang unit just for White Center. 17,000 people, maybe 20,000 with on the either side. But they proposed our own gang unit of four people. There's a, the, the gang unit we have now, God bless them, they're good guys. There's eight or nine of them, and they're split between 125,000 residents. Would we, would we rather have a gang unit just for White Center, or should we split their energies between this whole giant area? It makes sense to us to have our own gang unit. The West Seattle Precinct is 1.1 miles from downtown White Center, and there's 80 officers in it. And, and, the, and the Burien Police Department is 3.5 miles from downtown White Center. That, to me, just defies logic. That goes to ad ad adequacy of services. Fire departments. One of the things that I encourage you to look at, and you need to ask this question, 
is that there, we have a ratings bureau of fire services in the state. It's called the Washington Survey and Ratings Bureau. The documentation I got from Fire District 2 and Fire District 11 showed that, and the Seattle the Seattle Fire Department is, and what they do is they rate these, these fire departments so they can set insurance rates. And it really is an evaluation of water, uh, equipment, people, all the things that you have to consider on whether your family is safe in the city that they live in. Seattle has the highest rating in the, in the state. There's four cities that have the higher, highest rating. It's a two rating. And then it goes three, four, five, six. North Highline right now has a three rating, which is very unique. It was astonishing when we got it because it's, it's extraordinarily high for our unincorporated community like that. Burien has a rating of four. So what's going to happen is when we get annexed, our fire services rating will actually go down which means our fire service cost, our insurance cost price, will go up. And in reality, what the, the, what the, the ratings bureau is telling us is that we're less safe in period than we are now, and we, we'd be much safer if we lived in Seattle. And that goes to another thing. What did Seattle put in its budget when it looked at emergency services? It wanted to cite a medic one unit in White Center. Is Burien ever going to cite a medic one unit in White Center? There's no way. They don't have the dough. And that, to me, was an, a logical thing considering our family went through a high park crisis, and we had to get the medic one unit all the way over in the far corner of, of Boulevard Park, and it took a long time for it to get here. We needed a unit here. That's not going to be provided by the union. I guarantee it. I'm sorry, I've been dealing with this issue, these issues for so long. I'm frustrated because Burien has been unwilling, and, and the folks that support Burien have been unwilling to compare the services and give the people an honest understanding of what the difference in services are between these various municipalities. And that hasn't been done, and it's been a, dis, it's been a disservice to the community. Now let's talk about one of the things Burien did when they got their last election. We asked them to delay the election until November. Why do you delay an election until November? Because you get a much higher voter turnout. They did their vote in August, and the election in November, and they got a 56 or 57 percent participation in the election of the voting population. Ten weeks later in the November election, we got a 77 to 78 percent of participation in the election. We had an over 20 percent increase in voter participation by waiting 10 weeks and doing that election. Now, why would Burien not want to wait until a November election to make such an important annexation decision? Well, ask the UAC how many members on that on our neighborhood council, which I was a part of, are from the communities of color, which are half of our population. My point I'm trying to make here is that communities of color vote less in a lot year elections. They have always in this nation, and they continue to do so. And by having these um, annexation elections in off elections, you're reducing the participation of the communities of color. And White Center is half, almost half, communities of color. It's a, it's a dishonest way to make this decision. It's a dishonest way to engage the full community. And Gordon Shaw, who's sitting here, or was sitting here, said to me at a, at a our community summit, which is, oh, by the way, and the reason they might want to do that is we have these community summits every year that the CBA funds, and they're great. We get three, 400 people from every color, every shape. It's just this gorgeous event. And they put a polling. They give everybody a polling advice. They ask them a bunch of questions. And, get, and we poll. One of the questions we've always asked is, you, you know, we talk about, they talk about services, they talk about programs, and they say, you want to go to Buren, you want to go to Seattle. Well, guess who always wins in that population? I want to go to Seattle. It wins by 60, 65, 71% one year. We even caught some people that had extra polling devices that supported Buren, trying to make it so they could go back the other way. The point being that there has been, that Gordon Shaw didn't finish this. Gordon Shaw said to me at that community summit, we failed at engaging communities of color in what they need to know about government, what they need to know about services, and then participating in the election. And of course, Mike Martin said, oh, well, we'll get people to vote, we'll get people to vote. It didn't show that they got people to vote because they stuck with that August day. And then they said, oh, we need to because of planning. If they were going to have a fight over the library, they put the room down the gate without, without that in eye. My point is, folks, that this community, how many people of color are in this community? I see an employee have one. There must be a couple more in here. I see an employee of the county. Where are they? Where are they? They're half of White Center. Oh. I'm sorry for getting so excited that we can't let the system fail people that don't come to the meeting. They're part of this community too. 
And right now they're not here. And I'm sorry for coming last, but I was told that this, these hearings were for two days. And I was planning to come tomorrow with some other folks who have come. But I put my name on the list because I was told today was the last day to provide right. I could go on forever on these issues. Human services, five water districts. You want to know how we select our, our you know, we have, five, we have five water districts in North Highline, two fire districts, and two sewer districts. We actually had a paid water district director on the fire commission setting the salary for the fire chief. And then the fire chief was on the water district setting the salary for the water district director who was on the fire commission. That's how we government a union. And we accept it. I'm sorry, you guys. We don't have time to sit. Come on. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Trump, I have two questions. One is, what was the source of your murder rate data? Where did you get that data from? I can take you to every single murder by date because I keep it in my head. Because I go to the site, I am a, a, an artist in some form, and I think about each of those sites. And I keep track of it in my head. I've been here for 12 years, every moment takes every day. Then, um, yeah, I, I went to earlier, I mentioned this to the police chief, the King County David. Um, uh, the citizens ultimately will need to vote whether or not to annex to be in, and if they pose a no vote, then there's an opportunity through the process to start over again and propose annexation to Seattle. The information we have in our packet from Seattle the way I understand it, they, they did an assessment of what they would have provided if this area would be annexed to Seattle, but their conclusion was they couldn't afford it. Yeah. Um, are you aware of that letter? I'm aware of that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but I, and I would respond, though, that why can't they afford it? Why? You need to ask why, and that means you need to go very carefully and look at the level of services that Seattle was proposing for our residents. And the, Seattle, the, the level of services and the hundred thousand dollar budget for human services that Deering was proposing for White Center. A hundred. Oh, let me, let me bring up one other thing. One of the things we're doing in the chamber is we do a count of the homeless, chronic alcoholic population in White Center. There's 45 of them. We have. I could have brought a ton of material for you, but I was planning to bring a And um, it. And, and we're looking now. We have summits, and we're trying to figure out how to deal with the social consequences of that issue. Deering doesn't propose any resources. For that hasn't dealt with that issue, and we've got 45 people who are causing a severe problem for our business community and our general community who live in downtown White Center. And Deering hasn't addressed it. There's a multitude of things in that proposal. Uh, there's a there's a lack of a whole variety of issues that that proposal does not consider. And you need to send it back to the table and do a better job. That's what you need to do. And make them have to vote in November when it's going to be fair to everybody. Thank you. I have, I have two questions. First, you, you indicated that, that you thought that the hearings were going to go for this hearing was going to last for two days, and there might have been folks who were planning on coming tomorrow. Are, are there people who weren't here tonight well, planning yeah, to come we, to testify? We called tomorrow? a couple today and came tonight and said we were told that they needed to be here tonight, and there's a, I tried to get a call for a couple on the phone that were going to be here tomorrow that are not, but they're, you know, the ideas that their ideas are and share it. I don't want to say that it's the way we have the system. It's okay. And then my second question, if um, if Seattle were either unable or unwilling to annex this area, would your association prefer to remain an unincorporated county or prefer to come from the area? Well, I would, if, if, if Burien actually came up with a fair assessment and plan for our human services needs, Look at the Seattle families levy that they just passed that supplements education in Seattle, which we don't have. Which if you look, they just sent out a proposal, a request for proposals from Seattle. And if you look at that and think what they're looking for to allocate those resources, God, every you know, 67 percent of the families in our schools would benefit from those programs. If, if Burien would honestly come up with a proposal, here's how we're going to deal with these issues. Here's how we're going to deal with. 
with the homelessness. You're still going to deal with an increased policing and, a, and maintain your fire service level at the level it is now, if not make it better. And here's how our plan is to figure out how to put one in my center in the next five years. If they did all that, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing that. But what I hear is from my mark is that if you, if you can't control the discussion, he doesn't want it to happen. What he always says is, nothing will change. Nothing will change. I've been here 12 years. We need change. We need, and we need honest change and honest commitment in our community. We can put 600 volunteers out on Saturday in May to clean our community. We've got a lot going for us. But we need some support from government to do that. But we don't need a, a hands-off, lays-off there. Oh, we want to be a small community that doesn't do anything. We need service. Okay, this ends the people who were signed up for public testimony. Um, this would begin the rebuttal time. We are this evening, because of time constraints, going to divide that rebuttal in half. So what will happen this evening is that board members who do wish additional information to be provided during rebuttal, which will take place tomorrow, should submit those specific questions at this time. Um, you also would have the right to make inquiries during rebuttal, but if you can put your questions together now, then that will give Burian some time to provide the answers before we begin the formal rebuttal statement tomorrow evening. Could, Madam Secretary, could the um, questions also be directed to King County and the Fire District? Absolutely. Um, is the board clear on that's what our next steps are? Okay. Yeah. Um, Madam Secretary, I think it might be helpful for us if it's possible to have, if we're going to conduct an additional evening of hearing. Um, deliberation or, and also the rebuttal, if we could have someone from Burke in attendance, because I would very much like to talk to them. Would the City of Burien be able to do that to get someone from Burke and Associates to come tomorrow night? We'll be allowed to try. We'll see if we do. But we promise it's any other questions that the board might have? I'm inquisitive as to whether the gentleman, I'm sorry I couldn't get his name quickly enough, the one who was a realtor and then became a lawyer, if he's going to be in attendance tomorrow evening. evening. Yes. Are you going to be here tomorrow evening? I can be. Please. Chair, today I want to make sure I understand. Do you want us to submit any questions that we might have for the city in writing, or did you no, want to get them now? It would be helpful, and then we can ask the city to do the homework tomorrow and be ready for tomorrow night. If you want to do it first thing in the morning, you can call them, I suppose. But it might be easier now. I'm ready with a few questions. I'd like the city to um, help us understand what they mean by structural deficit, or especially the Burke Report, any references to, I think there was a reference to one, the term dead at 1.2, which um, is hard to understand because the city can't call them dead. Um, and then to perhaps discuss if the structural deficit is unique to Burien or how other cities use that mechanism for analysis of their budget. Just a better understanding what that means. Um, and then either the county or the city to speak to stormwater fees and if they're the same or different for King County unincorporated areas or uh, incorporated areas. Um, oh, and then if the city could speak tomorrow night to any plans or what's available to the citizens who, following the hearing, have until the election to continue to learn about this annexation, to gather more facts, to have opportunities to have their questions answered, um, any to 
discussion groups. However, the city plans on handling the information piece between now and elections. Yes, Ms. Uh, yeah, I think from my notes that, that I feel that there's been a conflict of opinion about the expansion or the, uh, I wrote down, no change in social services, and I'd like to have that addressed tomorrow night, whether or not there is a consideration of expansion for social services or if they are to stay the same. May I piggyback on that? Um, because my question was, I think, similar. I believe I heard folks say that there would be no social services in King County who are not involved in the area. I'm wondering what social services King County provides now and if it's actual program provision or financial support for other program providers. Okay, I, I had a short list. Um, probably first and foremost is uh, it might be good to give people a quick primer on the um, property tax burden and what will be entailed in that as it relates both to from the city uh, of the area that should be annexation happen as well as any county um, issues as it relates to tax burden. Uh, another thing I heard come up a couple of times about is about capital improvements and how the city goes about as it relates to capital improvement it might be good to for the city to explain how they go about prioritizing those and um, and where that resides and how uh, they take on that and how would they Look forward to take on taking that on uh, with the proposed area. Other questions? I think several of us have addressed the statement by Burke in regard to the stimulation of the market in 2012 and 2014. Uh, big, big part, 2014 and 2016, and they made that actually in highlighted the 2016, and I'd like to have them answer the source of their opinion. This is awesome. And I'd like to um, just reiterate the, the concerns that have been raised about human services, um, and I would also like to know what the current provision of human services are by King County to the extent that we change. Um, and then I was interested in the discrepancy between the, the proposed $1.9 million that would have been provided, um, that the City of Seattle would have proposed to provide versus the $100,000 that would be provided annually by the City of Fury. If you could just kind of generally address um, the concerns that were raised about human services. And then I'd also be interested in hearing about the status of negotiations regarding the annexation agreements with regards to the 195 acres um, that would remain in fire district number the other. And also if I could give you the vote the point. Oh the the first the first lengthy one that I will not be able to do exactly how to this last time. Um, yeah, I, I'm interested in, in learning more about human services generally, the, the extent to which they're provided currently by King County, um, and I was interested in the, in the difference in numbers between what in the City of Seattle's plan would have been $1.9 million in provision of human services versus um, the $100,000 annually that would be provided by the City, and was just looking for the City to generally address the issue regarding human services. And could I also pigtail on to your uh, status of negotiation for the fire district? We received a letter today from the city of Seattle asking about how to handle the pension right, requirements. So that could also be addressed. Can I just clarify that since these comments are being addressed to the, the yes. city and the county, that would need to be addressed by the fire district. So I just want to make clear that someone's going to contact them and ask them. Well, if, um, actually, on that though, I, I mean, I, because it's City of Beering's proposal, I'd be interested if the city has actually contacted the fire districts and what what the status of that would be. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, one, uh, I'd like 
like the city, to, the, the police chief in particular, to bring back some summary data on crime rates. I know the police chief spoke to it, um, providing a qualitative summary, and I found that to be very consistent with what I found on the King County Sheriff's website for 2010, and rates that I calculated per thousand for both the annexation area Y and city of Burien. Um, but it, it might be probably have more validity if the police chief brought back some actual numbers for us and that they came from him. Any other questions? It's quite an extensive list. So, um, I, I have a I do have a suggestion. <clears throat> when we're talking about the different proposals and so forth, <clears throat> we cross between Burien and Seattle and then take the area Y and that type of thing. I think the comparison right now should be between Burien and uh, annexation and, and the Y, what is needed within the Y. Because Seattle's proposal is, is so much different. And, it, you know, I think it's confusing when you start crossing those. Just a suggestion. Other questions or comments? <clears throat> okay, Madam um, Secretary, could we, as board members, give you a call in the morning if we think of any others? Or is this an email? <laughs> I, I would think that would be fine. We would want to get them pretty early so that we can get them out to the board members and plenty of time so that I can also inform the city or the county or the fire district that they need to have those things. And because this is my first chair of a hearing, um, I want to check a single question that I might be members to the audience as well. My understanding now is that the public hearing is still yeah. and I will ask in a moment for a motion to continue the public hearing to tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at this place. And during that time then, there will be time for the public from the cities and the other government entities. Will there be any additional time for any further testimony? We could do that. There would be, um, it would be possible, but we, just, we usually want to do that before we actually do rebuttal. Okay. Um, so and then there might be a and then tomorrow, as she said, we might have time to go into the deliberations. So, I would at this moment then entertain a motion to continue the hearing to the January 10th, 2012, 7 o'clock. So moved. Second. Discussion? Why do you discussion? So, are we leaving the public comment portion open for any yes. Yes, I have it. Okay, that's what Mr. Coffin is. Okay, thank you. Any other? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Let's see, let's see, let's see. A couple of those. 